In today's video, we're going to show you how to fit a tyre insert uh, onto the inside of a tyre and set it up tubeless. Now, tyre inserts are a fantastic addition, especially if you ride in really rocky conditions. They can genuinely help save your tyre from getting pinch punches, and to a degree, they can help prevent damage to your rims as well. Here's how you do it. Okay, so there's several things you're going to need to put a tyre liner in starting with the actual tyre liner itself. Now there are loads of different brands on the market, uh, starting from Cushcore, which is one of the more serious heavy duty options out there, to all the foam liners. Uh, this one's a Victoria Airliner, it's a foam style liner and you trim it down to size. So we're going to be fitting one of these on a spank wheel with a Victoria tyre and we're going to use muck off sealant. Now whatever brand you use, the principle is exactly the same for installing these and other than having your liner and your tubeless setup, one of the most important things is you make sure you have a compatible valve. The fundamental difference between a regular tubeless valve and one that's compatible with inserts is the bottom. So if you look closely, the regular one only allows air to pass straight into the tyre, whereas that can get blocked by the insert itself. Now, ignoring the fact that this insert actually has a profiled shape, uh, you should still be looking for one that has multiple ports on there for letting the air out in all directions. Uh, that means you're going to get the tyre inflated properly every time. Uh, it's just not going to happen with one of the more conventional ones. Other than that, you'll need your favourite choice in tyre sealant. Uh, some tyre levers, definitely not metal tyre levers. My recommendation would be to have some warm soapy water on hand just to help the bead get into place so it inflates first time. Um, then you obviously want a pump and preferably a syringe to inject the tyre sealant into the valve afterwards. It definitely saves on mess, I'll explain that when we get to that stage. And of course you need a compatible tyre uh, that fits your relevant wheel. Step one is to get your tubeless valve in place. Now before you do this you want to make sure that your wheel is actually taped up correctly, use the correct width tape and make sure it's all nice and sealed on there. Now if you have a tubeless valve that has an option of changing the rubber grommet, make sure you've got the correct grommet to correlate to the shape of the rim, that way you're going to make sure you won't suffer from any sort of slow punctures in time. Now I'm just going to get the valve stem in place, put the little rubber o-ring on there and then that little retaining lock nut, hold that in place nicely. Okay, now depending on the brand that you have, you're more than likely going to have to trim your tie liner down uh, to suit, essentially. Now, everyone has a slightly different method of doing this. Now, the one I like to do is to have it on the slightly smaller side to keep it as tight as possible on there, because over time, these things can grow slightly and they can rattle around on the inside. It does vary uh, between brands, though, of course. So I'm gonna off mine up and then show you how I go about it. So, literally hold it in place on the rim. Move it all the way around. And you'll see it comes to overlap here. Now, in an ideal world, you would mark with a pen uh, at this point and you would trim it here and then make it nice and neat. I'll make that mark, but I'll actually trim it slightly shorter than that. So when I pull it tight uh, with the cable tie that's included in the pack, it basically pulls it all nicely together and it keeps it tight in place, which is exactly what I want. Next stage is to carefully just trim it down. Obviously you want to trim it with a nice sharp knife uh, to get the best effect, but make sure you do it where you can't damage anything else. There we go, now just neaten it up a bit. And then you're going to need to make a small hole on both ends for the cable tie to go between. I like to use a screwdriver for this. All the way through, and then the same on the other end. Cable tie then goes in through those holes that you've made. Now I would make sure that the joining part of the cable tie, like the lock on it, is on the rim side, not on the external side. You just don't want any chance of damaging the tire. Uh, it's better for it to butt up against the rim. And then secure that cable tie. Pull that together nicely. And then trim the cable tie and just try and make that as flush cut as you can. Now, depending on your tire, your liner and your tubeless system option, uh, how easy this next step is gonna be will vary. So what I'd recommend is trying to do like a dry fit. Uh, when I say dry, that's not using the sealant at this stage. I would put the sealant in last in the process and I would definitely recommend using warm soapy water. Okay, so nice bit of 
warm soapy water. Some people question this, but it makes it far easier and it's just warm soapy water, it will evaporate. So I've got my valve stem here. I'm gonna go with the M on the Martello, which is the center of the tire. Um, my direction is already sorted. So I'm just gonna get that first side in place. Now you may need to use tire levers depending on your tire and rim combination. Don't be afraid of using them if you need to, just be cautious not to use metal ones because they can easily damage the tire, sometimes the rim as well. Okay, first side is in place. Now it's time to get the liner in there. Now note where the holes are on the liner, they'll be a few times located around. Make sure one of these lines up with the valve stem as best as possible anyway. So I've got my valve stem here and that hole. So I'm just gonna put this in at that point. Feed the liner in place. Now this bit can be tricky because you need to get the liner all the way on the rim before you can start moving the tire into place. And as you cut it to size, it can be quite tricky. And then it's a case of trying to work the tire all the way around. Obviously it's much harder to get a tire on when you've got a liner in there than it is without one because you have to compress the liner to a point to actually get the bead in place. So don't be afraid to use tire levers if you need to. There's no inner tube to damage on this. But as always, if you can, it's always a good idea to try and get as far as you can without them. Okay, so it's got a bit tricky here. And now it starts feeling quite difficult towards the end, but uh, it's worth it in the long run for the additional protection you can gain. And here we go, the last bit in place. Right, so that is our tire basically in place. The next part of the process is getting it set up tubeless. Now, what I personally like to do is not to put a tubeless solution in at this point. I'm actually gonna put a bit more soapy water all the way around the beading there and get the tires seated. Yeah, so that makes it airtight straight away. Then once it's seated, we know that when we put the tire sealant in place, it's not gonna to be too messy. So at that point, I'll deflate the air that's in there, leaving the tire hopefully in place all the way around. I'll then remove the valve core and inject the tire sealant in directly at that point, replace the valve core and then inflate the tire and hopefully it should be set up right. Now don't forget, you wanna get this seated. So you may need a tubeless specific pump, but I'm gonna get away with a regular pump here because this is quite a tight fit. If yours is a bit looser, uh, it might be to your advantage to have one of those specific tubeless pumps. And you should hear the beads snap into place. Now, as with seating any tire, you wanna make sure you go all the way around and inspect it. And what you're looking for it actually makes it easy to see visually on this tire. There's like a black rim that runs around the edge of the actual rim between the gray sidewall and the bead of rubber there. So you can actually visually see that the bead is in place. Same for both sides. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna remove the valve core. All the air is gonna come out and then I'm gonna inject the sealant in, which will set up tubeless. And the amount of sealant you use depends on your preferences. We're gonna go for 70 mil in this setup. Okay, so this is the bit that can get messy. Hopefully it won't be for you. Tire seal in. So now I can just remove that. Wipe any residue that's come out. Get the valve core back in place. And now time to reinflate. Now take extreme caution if you're doing this anywhere that can't be cleaned up easily. Um, you wanna be doing this in a workshop, in a garage or outside. Avoid doing this inside where there's carpet or anything that can catch the, the spray if you do manage to leak any out of this stage because tire sealant generally, it's quite nasty stuff on fabrics. But this time, 
Looks like it's been nice and neat. So all I need to do is replace the, the valve core there, uh, tighten it up even, put a valve cap on, and just wipe down the excess water everywhere. Now, as with any tubular setup, before you ride the bike, you want to give it enough time to make sure the sealant has done its job on the inside, seal up any sort of small holes and things. So what I like to do is slosh it around a little bit and leave it for a bit of time on both sides on your bucket that you've already got there. Uh, leave it to cure, essentially, to make it sort of smear the inside. Go and get a cup of tea, flip it around, do the other side and then you're good to go. If you've got any questions about installing inserts and tires, feel free to uh, let us know in the comments underneath. And other than that, we'll see you in the next video. And good luck doing it. Let us know how you get on.